Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, I'm talking about color spaces. What is a color space? Why do I care about it? What color spaces do I use in my photography? Uh, so this was a topic that was, uh, you know, kind of a challenge for me to get my mind around. I'm not going to be doing a deep dive. I'm not going to be showing graphs and these like really, you know, weird shaped color maps that you'll see in articles online about color spaces. Those are great if you want to dig deep into the, the technicals on it, go for it. I want to summarize it for you, tell you what I use, it's working for me, and then you can fine tune it and tailor it to your own workflow. So what is a color space? Simply put, it is a range of colors that can be displayed for your photo. And you'll hear terms about the gamut of a color space, wide gamut, narrow gamut, and sometimes they have numbers like 2.2 and things like that. The gamut just means the range, how many colors can be represented. And you know, why do you care? Well, think about a, uh, a photo of a clear blue sky. It's this very smooth, natural gradation of blues from deeper blues all the way down to lighter blues. And the wider gamut, the bigger your color space is, the more different individual tones of blue can be represented in your photo and shown accurately. If you use a smaller color space, well, then fewer of those blues can be shown. And if you've ever seen a photo that has like bands of blue, that's one of the reasons that that happens is you're using a smaller color space or a smaller bit density, which means lower bits means fewer colors can be represented. So um, that's, you know, this is why we care about these things. So what are the, uh, the color spaces that I work with? Uh, there's three that seem to come up again and again in my photography. Uh, the first, from smallest to largest, the first is sRGB. The second is Adobe RGB. And the third is Profoto RGB. Profoto is the largest one sRGB is the smallest one. Adobe RGB, I honestly don't really use, but it does show up in our cameras. The chances are if you're going through all the different menus in your cameras, there'll be one option in there about color space. I'll always set that to Adobe RGB. Why? It's larger than sRGB. I want to maintain more colors. And that's like my first guideline. Think about your workflow from the point of view of capture through editing and finally output. I want to use the largest, richest color space as long as possible in my process. I don't want to throw away colors early, especially at capture. Now, if you're shooting raw, that color space setting really doesn't matter. It's only if you're shooting JPEG. So, you know, just the, the, but the, the, the guideline there, don't throw away color on the floor. Don't, don't drop it out uh, halfway through your workflow only to find out, you know, it's going to cause you problems later when you're outputting. Now, what about the uh, the other two, sRGB and Profoto RGB? Uh, Profoto RGB is the largest one. That's the color space I work with uh, all the time through my entire digital workflow. And that is by default what's used in Lightroom. I want to show you two places where this comes up. The first place is in the Lightroom preferences under the external editing pad. And right there in front of us, it says 16-bit Profoto is the recommended choice. That's what Lightroom is using. So when I bring a raw file from my camera into Lightroom, I'm using Profoto RGB. I'm using 16-bit. Sidebar on the bit depth, use the larger bit depth. Your camera's capturing more than 8 bits. Your computers are well capable of processing more than 8 bits. Yes, the file will be larger. However, so will your color richness. If you're dropping to 8 bits, you're throwing away information just dropping it on the floor if you send a photo out into Photoshop or something like that using 8 bits. So just don't do that. Uh, so um, you have the choices here. So here, if you're editing in Photoshop, you can choose your file format and your color space. You want to set that to Profoto RGB. For all of your external editors, do the same thing. So you have a variety of external editors, whatever they are, set them to Profoto RGB. And I make sure to check that every time I install a new plugin, very often the default is Adobe RGB, and I don't want that. I want to have that richer color space. I've worked on a file in Lightroom. It has a very rich color space. I send that to another program. I want to maintain that. I haven't, you know, I don't have to drop colors on the floor. So using Profoto RGB throughout your entire processing workflow just makes sense to me. I'm maintaining the color data, especially that nice juicy raw file that my camera has captured. Now, the one other spot that the uh, color space shows up is in export. When we're exporting a photo, one of the areas is file settings. 
And just like we saw with the plugins, you're choosing an image format and you can also choose a color space. Now here I happen to have it set for JPEG and sRGB. That's because this is a, an export preset for sharing online. Now sRGB is the smallest color space, but it's also the most widely used. It's like the common denominator for color spaces. So if I export to sRGB, chances are when anyone looks at my photo, it's going to look reasonably well on their display. Will it look exactly like the one I have here on my machine in the studio? No, but it'll look pretty darn good. So I will use sRGB when I'm sharing photos online. So it's uh, Right now we have you know, two simple choices. I'm using ProPhoto RGB everywhere in my computer, my entire digital workflow. When I need to save a file and export it for sharing on the web, I'll use sRGB so I can guarantee that it's going to look nice on the widest variety of displays that are out there. Now the last question comes up is what about printing? Right. Well, uh, that will depend. If you're printing directly to your printer from your computer, you know, you're doing your soft proofing because your printer and your printer paper, they have their own color space. You know, they may or may not have a specific name for it, but the paper, the ink, all that stuff, it's capable of representing a finite set of colors. It may not be the same gamut or the same range as ProPhoto RGB, that's why we have soft proofing so we can fine tune and uh, adjust things for print. So if you're printing on your own, I've got a different set of videos all about printing. Check out the ones on soft proofing. If you're sending a photo out to a lab, well, we're back to the export route, right? We're exporting our photo and we're going to choose whatever file format and whatever color space that the lab says they want. I just match my process to what the lab wants. Sometimes labs want sRGB. Sometimes they want ProPhoto RGB. Sometimes they may not know what they want, in which case you got to call them up and talk to them and find out, you know, what makes more sense. I have seen cases where I export with sRGB. The photo doesn't look right in the lab's tools for, you know, fine tuning things. When I export with ProPhoto RGB, it looks like I expect it to look like. So uh, you just talk to your lab and get that part squared away. But summed up, what's a color space? It's a range of colors. And why do you care? You want to represent the colors you've captured in your photo to the richest extent possible. My guidelines is use ProPhoto RGB for your entire digital workflow. You know, shoot raw, capture a nice, healthy, depth of raw data, and then process it in ProPhoto RGB. Don't drop colors on the floor until you absolutely have to. That's usually for exporting and sharing on the web using sRGB. That's going to do it for color spaces. And so again, this is not the deep technical dive. If you've got uh, pointers to like really good articles about you know the in-depth, how color spaces work, and you know, whatever the theories around them are, you know, share them in the comments because there may be others that are also interested in looking into that. And we can all learn from one another. But summed up, that's how I use color spaces in my photography. ProPhoto RGB, sRGB, and I call it good. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.